Well, hello, God bless you. I pray you're having a great day. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm as excited as I can be. I'm filled with the joy of the Lord, and I pray that you are enjoying your day, walking in the goodness of the God of the Bible, and I pray that you are in a celebratory mood because, you know, uh, some good things have just happened. We, we, we got uh, a little more protection uh, for our children because we are, we are blocking those who are trying to frame mischief by a law. The Bible says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with God? Shall those who practice godlessness actually be able to actually fellowship with the God of the Bible. And the question is, he describes them here in Psalms 94 and verse 20. He says, which frameth mischief by a law. That is the people who vote into law wrongdoing. Can you have fellowship with God if you do these things? And of course, the answer is no. But we've just, a wonderful thing has just happened uh, in our state just yesterday. North Carolina legislature overrides six governor vetoes, putting measures into law. Look at this. Two of those bills focus on charter school regulations. A third on building code procedures. And look at this, which is what, what I want to speak to you about today. Two on transgender issues. Transgender issues. I have it right here. Look at this. Uh, this is uh, Sessions Law, uh, um, House Bill 808. House Bill 808, an act to prohibit gender transition procedures for minors. An act to prohibit gender uh, uh, transition procedures for minors. Now, in, in our state, minors can't drive a car. Minors can't smoke. Minors can't drink alcohol. Minors can't smoke, uh, dip tobacco. Minors can't smoke cigarettes. There's a whole lot of things minors can't do. Minors can't get into R-rated movies. Minors can't do a whole lot of things in our state. And can you believe that we had to pass a law that would keep minors uh, from having from being mutilated sexually by, look at this, the definitions, biological sex, the biological indications of male and female in the context of reproductive potential or capacities such as sex chromosomes, naturally occurring sex hormones, gonads, and uh, non-ambiguous internal and external genitalia present at birth without regard to any individual psychological chosen or subjective experience of gender. Here is looking at just solely uh, the, the way the child is born. And this is designed to keep families, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, nephews from uh, accompanying minors, taking minors to doctors and having their bodies as minors mutilated. Now, you would think that everybody would vote to keep this from happening. You would think that there would be no need for a override, but you're wrong. According to uh, what we have here with the Senate roll call, this vote, uh, look at this. This is the roll call on the gender transition for minors. House Bill 808. Look at this. There was a total of 45 votes. This is the Senate. Total of 45 votes. Yays, 27. Nays, 18. Of the 27 uh, yays to protect minors, 27 Republican votes, zero Democrat votes. Of the no's, 18 voted no, zero Republicans voted no, 18 Democrats voted no. I'm telling you, I don't know why anyone would oppose uh, protecting uh, little children. In the, in the House, uh, look at this, there were 119 votes, yays, 74, 74 yeas, 72 of the 74 
came from Republicans and two of the 74 came from Democrats. No's 45, zero Republicans voted no, uh, zero Democrats voted, zero Republicans, excuse me, voted no, and 45 Democrats voted no. I'm so glad that this thing was not upheld. And I'll tell you something else here. I have another thing. Uh, look at this, ladies. This is for the women. Fairness in women's sport. This was overridden. Also, look at this. Yays, 74. Nays, 45. 72 uh, Republicans voted uh, yay to, to protect women in sports. And two Democrats voted yay. And uh, of the no's, 45 were against it. Zero Republicans voted against it, and 45 Democrats voted against it. And uh, uh, this was in the, uh, the, the House. And in the Senate, the yeas were 27. 27 Republicans voted uh, yay to the Fairness in Women's Act, and zero Democrats voted yay. And 18 uh, Democrats, there were 18 uh knows zero Republicans voted no, 18 Democrats voted no. Now, what this act says, among other things, is um, all teams participating in interscholastic and intramural athletic activities shall comply with the following. Uh, look at this. Um, athletic teams designated for females, women, or girls shall not be open to students of the male sex. Uh, for the purposes of subdivision, the student's sex shall be recognized based solely on the student's reproductive biology and uh, genetics at birth, which is the way we've always determined who pe people's sexuality. And we had to pass a law. We had to pass a law, and the law had to sustain a veto from our governor. We're praying for you, uh, uh, Governor Cooper. We had to sustain a veto. Uh, 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 they had to override the governor's veto just to protect women, to protect children, little girls and little boys in sports, mainly girls, because you, we're not going to have a problem with girls trying to play boy sports. Uh, the issue is young men filled with testosterone, filled with strength, with a, with a physical superiority based on the way that the creator made us, uh, made young men. Uh, young men should not be, a, be allowed to participate in sports with girls, whether we're talking about baseball, hockey, volleyball, uh, kickball, any other ball, weightlifting, pickleball, ping pong, uh, uh, tennis, you name it. Praise the Lord. The sports we should do like we've done uh, since forever. Let the girls participate with the girls and the guys participate with the guys. Baseball is for the fellas. They came up with softball for the girls. You see, it makes sense. It makes sense. Have you noticed that the pitching is different in, in the two sports? Why? Because men and women are different. So thank God, thank God for this measure of common sense prevailing. And this is not designed to tell you who to vote for, who to stand by, or anything like that. I just thought I would report to you what actually happened. You make your decisions based on your, your relationship with God and your common sense. But the Bible is right. And, 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 uh, and listen, we don't need to try and to codify, to frame mischief and, and put it into law. People say to me all the time, Gary, wouldn't, why do you, uh, do you keep a, why do you deal with politics and all of that? I'm telling you, I am not a fan of politics at all. But the problem is, Saints, you've heard me say this before, the politician, the political parties, have stepped into the territory of the church. They've stepped into the territory of God. These people uh, try to play God. They try to tell us what to think and how, how to behave. And as I've said many times, the Antichrist, will he be a political figure 
or will he be a religious figure? When you study the scriptures, you see that he will be both. He will be as much religious as he is political and as much political as he is religious. And so saints, as never before, the, the believer has got to keep their eyes on the Lord and yet at the same time be well aware of what's going on in this world that we are not of, but we live in it. And we live in it. We walk in it. We eat, sleep and breathe in it. And we're going to be in it until Christ comes to take us out of it or until death comes. And so in the meantime, Jesus said we're to occupy till he comes. Speaking of occupying, I can hardly wait to have you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. You notice I'm back in the office, praise the Lord, at my desk, and I got all the glorious, all my wonderful flags behind me. And from time to time, my friends, I just want you to know, the flags, it's not endorsing an immoral lifestyle. It's my way of saying to the immoral, you can't have God's rainbow. The God of the Bible uh, made the rainbow, and the rainbow is a symbol of God's grace and God's mercy. And I thank God for being a graceful and merciful God. And I want you to join me right here tonight. I'm as fired up as I can be. I'm going to wrap this up, but join me for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. You know, here at the Upper Room Church of God of Christ, we get excited about Bible study. You know, some get excited about Christian concerts, special guests coming in. We're bringing in this big name person. We're bringing in this famous individual. Praise God. And I think there's a place for all of that. But saints, I'm glad that I haven't lost my joy and my excitement and my delight for plain old, good old Bible study. I'll see you tonight for Bible study right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.